hi, this is Tom Greenwood from Greenwood Photos and Sydney Portraits. So I'm a photographer based in Sydney, Australia. I'm essentially a people photographer. I do a lot of portrait stuff. I also take a lot of photos in the developing world for aid organisations. So we're talking about wide angle lenses. So we're going to go through some examples of how a wide angle lens can be used and what it can bring to your photography. Now in particular, we're looking at how a wide angle lens can be used to tell a story and to really create a connection between the subject and the photo and the viewer. We're also gonna look at some of the perils of wide angle photography, particularly using ultra wide angle lenses. We're gonna come across scenarios like wide arm syndrome and Frankenstein forehead. So we really have three categories of wide angle lenses. We have standard wide, which is 35 millimeters to 24 millimeters. Ultra wide, which is essentially anything wider than 24 millimeters. And then once we get to say 15 millimeters and beyond, we're in fisheye territory. So this is my collection of wide angle lenses. I'm not suggesting you run out and buy them, although you could do a lot worse. But I know that when I was starting out as a photographer, I was often looking at images and thinking, hmm, I wonder what lens they use there. So in the interests of full disclosure, this is what I use. So there's the 24 to 70 millimeter f 2.8 okay this is a classic all-rounder lens it goes wide to 24 millimeter and it goes longish to 70 millimeter and everything in between this is probably the lens i use most i use it a lot in the studio i use it a lot outdoors when i'm out and about when there's lots of light it's great for portraits and it's great for action shots as well next up is my 16 to 35 millimeter Obviously it covers some of the same ground as the 24 to 70, but it goes that extra bit further. It goes to 16, which is pretty wide. These days you can get hold of the Mark II versions of these lenses, which are said to be sharper. And certainly for the 16 to 35, I think that would be a good thing because these days I do notice it's not quite as sharp as I would like. And finally, my sellotaped 35 mil lens. Always a classy touch, a bit of sellotape on a lens. Now you're probably asking why on earth I need a 35 mil when I've got a 24 to 70 and a 16 to 35. Well, the fact is it's a prime lens and I'll talk more about prime lenses in another clip, but in a nutshell, this lens is beautifully sharp. It has fantastic color, great contrast. And most importantly, it has an aperture of F 1.4. This means beautifully narrow depth of focus, and it also means I can shoot in very low light, which to me is very important. Now I find 35 mil is also a really nice focal length. It's not super wide, and, and that often encourages me to just pull back a little bit, which I think is a good thing. It gives more of a maturity to my photography, I'd say. Let's look at how and why we use wide angle lenses. So an obvious use, squeezing it in. There's an expression in photography, zooming with your feet. What it means is instead of using a zoom lens to get closer to your subject, you just walk a few steps closer to them. But there are times when you can't zoom with your feet, you can't get any closer to your subject. And likewise, there are times when you can't get any further away from them. This was taken in a vocational school in East Timor. And for me, it was important to get a number of things in this shot. Obviously, I've got the instructor, I've got the students. This is an IT lesson. I really had to get the keyboard and the mouse in there. Now, I couldn't move back because I was backed up against the wall, but my trusty 16 to 35 lens did the trick. And here I'm shooting at 17 millimeters, so I'm just about able to squeeze everything in. Another good example of when you really don't have any choice but to use a wide angle lens, and really we're talking about an ultra wide angle lens, is for interior shots. So it's another case of back against the wall and ultra wide lens. So this is 19 mil. Now shooting interiors is kind of a specialized niche. So um, perhaps I'll do another clip on it later to look at the ins and outs of how to approach that. So moving on from really having no choice but to use a wide angle lens to making a conscious decision based on what we want the image to say. So here's a shot, it was taken for the organization Mary Stopes, which deals with reproductive health and contraception. 
So here, without any sort of caption for the image, we can say that we're in a village. We can say we're in Papua New Guinea. And we can probably guess that this guy is talking to the villagers about reproductive health, because that's what it says on the back of his shirt. Arguably, we can glean something about the attitude of the villagers towards what this guy has to say. We've got lots of faces, lots of different expressions. People are curious, some are maybe a little skeptical, perhaps a bit confused, but they're attentive. They really want to know what this guy has to say. So using a wide angle lens here allowed me to get lots of context in the shot. Here at 35 millimeters, so not so wide, but wide enough to get a lot of visual information in here. So if we go from left to right, we've got the name of the school. We've got this lovely smiling girl holding a book. This book promotes literacy in her own language. And to the right, we can see a bunch of schoolboys and an old shed. We can see that we can see that this is a rural area and it's probably quite poor. <clears throat> Next, one thing I love most about wide angle lenses is it means you can get really close. Now it's possible to overdo it, and I know in the past I did overdo it quite a lot. I got too close, I got pretty much amongst people's nostril hairs. And the resulting shots, while at the time I thought they were fantastic, now I look at and think, hmm, yeah, a bit too close, a bit too wide. Anyway, we're in East Timor again. This little girl's having her arm measured for malnutrition. And the green tells you that she's not malnourished. This shot was really all about the child. So it was important to get really close, to get down on her level, to get those big eyes, and actually to be in the position of the guy who's measuring her arm. So I wanted the shot to feel as if we're right there. The viewer is right there in this clinic in a little village in East Timor. Being a street vendor in Bangkok is not an easy life. It's long hours, it's hard physical work, and at the end of the night, you plunge your hand into a bowl of filthy water. So I'm shooting at 16 millimeters. I can get really close. I can get down on her level and give a sense, perhaps it's just a glimpse of what that woman's life is like. Okay, action. Different kind of shot altogether. We're at a party, we're at a wedding. We've got drunk people dancing, flinging themselves around. Again, we want to be close. We want to feel we're in amongst the action. But also things are moving fast. People are, people are dancing, people are falling all over the place. By getting close with a wide angle lens, and here we're talking about a 20 mil lens, we're sort of casting a wide net. They can dance, they can fling themselves around. Without moving too much, we can feel sure that we've got them. We've got them in the frame. And in this shot, we've also got reactions. We've got the main action, which is this guy falling over with the older woman. But we've also got reactions of the people around them. Going back to the previous point, we're, we're telling a little story here. This is the same guy pulling some moves on the dance floor. Again, we're nice and wide. We're very close. We're probably about a meter away from him. We've got some reactions in the background. And we pretty much feel we're there on the dance floor. Okay, another action shot, this time on a beach in Papua New Guinea. These children are up and down like jumping beans, moving very, very fast. There's no way my camera could follow them with a longer lens. So I'm on 22 mils. I found a spot where they're nicely framed. They can jump around as much as they like. They're going to be in the frame. And I also get that all important context. There's a lot of visual information in the shot. So I can't stress enough how good a wide angle lens is for action. Anything that's moving fast, apart from maybe a car or a horse or something like that. Now looking at these shots, makes me a little bit nostalgic because these days I don't really have the time to do street photography. And to be honest, these days in Sydney, you probably wouldn't last more than five minutes as a street photographer without getting a, a tap on your shoulder from Mr. Plod. Here's a shot in Hua Lampong Station in Bangkok. Taken quite a few years ago now, and you notice that these two women, both of them waiting for a train, neither of them is glued to their smartphone. Now each of these images was shot from the hip Basically, I had my camera at waist level. I had the manual focus set to about two meters. If you're, if you're lucky, no one's actually aware that you're taking a photo. So you're getting nice little slices of life. And for that, a wide angle lens is invaluable. Again, it gives you a broad canvas and a bit of room for error. 
Now, when I was a kid and I had my mum's hand-me-down camera, it was an old Casina SLR, it had a 50mm lens on. I remember standing on top of a hillside in France, looking over this beautiful, huge, beautiful valley, and thinking, what I need now is a wide-angle lens. There's no way I can get this beautiful vista into a single shot with my 50mm. Now, if I'd had a wide-angle lens, I can guarantee the shots would have been pretty ordinary. The steep hillsides in the distance would have looked pretty flat. So generally speaking, you wouldn't use a wide-angle lens for landscapes. Anything in the distance is just going to look small, it's going to look flat. But by the same token, anything close to the camera is going to look big. And that can sometimes work in landscape photography. If you're trying to emphasize the foreground rather than the background, like in this shot of rice paddies, for example, or the rocks in this stream, then it can work quite nicely. By now, it's pretty clear what a wide-angle lens does. It distorts perspective. Anything far from the camera becomes small, anything close to the camera becomes big. That's not always what you're after as a photographer. Sometimes you want to do the opposite. You want to compress the scene. You want things that are further away to appear closer. And that's when you'll use a long lens. But the ability to distort perspective with a wide angle lens is, is very useful. It allows us to kind of editorialize. In the same way that a cartoonist might make a caricature, might draw chin or nose or ears much bigger than they actually are. So we can choose which elements in the picture we'd like to enlarge for creative effect. Here's an obvious one. Um, we're back in PNG. And this guy's getting dressed up in traditional tribal gear with face paint and feathers. Now this was a lovely guy. He was warm, he was friendly, but he was a big guy. He was a tough guy. And to be quite honest, you wouldn't mess. And the face paint is all about theatricality. It's all about looking tough, looking warlike, looking scary. So by getting close to his hand, which is holding the shard of mirror, I can sort of, I can sort of bring out that physicality even more. Here again, this is an image about menace. We have a nun in East Timor holding a rather nasty looking dart that ended up in her compound during the disturbances in the mid 2000s. So we need the frown of the nun, but, but the focus of the shot is the dart itself and her fingers holding it. Of course, by using a wide angle lens, by getting close, her hand and more importantly, the dart are already front and center Different scenario here, got some very cute children in Vietnam. This shot is all about cheekiness. Okay, I'm at 24 mil. I'm pretty close to the little boy in front. And it means his head is nice and big. His eyes are nice and big and shiny. And I've got all those other cheeky little faces, different sizes in the shot. And in a way, they lead the eye around to the boy in the center of the shot. Now, the ability to distort perspective is a great thing, but... It doesn't come without certain perils. Here's one of them, the dreaded wide arm syndrome. Now, I didn't spend much time studying her arm, but I can assure you it doesn't really look like that. But the fact is, I was shooting very wide, 17 mil. I was very close, I guess a meter away, and she was right on the edge of the frame. Here again, it's not quite as dramatic, but again, it's some wide arm syndrome. So here's the next shot, also 16 mil. But I just moved a step back. It means everyone is more in the center of the frame. So they're not getting stretched. It's really on the outer edges that that stretching takes place. <laughs> okay, here's another howler. Rather than the fat arm syndrome, this is the elastic arm syndrome. Different kind of shot, same problem. This was in my very early days. I had my 16 to 35. I thought it was the best thing on the planet. And I was going to get as close as I possibly could. The result, Frankenstein forehead, not good. So the lesson here is clear. If you're shooting ultra wide and your subject is straying into the outer edges of the frame, then take a step or two back, and maybe adjust the focal length as well. Maybe you don't need to be on 16, perhaps you can be on even 18 or 20 will make a big difference. Overall, I'd say a wide angle lens is an excellent tool to tell stories, that sense of in-your-face immediacy, that connection between subject and viewer, 
that can make your photography come alive. So if you found this clip useful, please feel free to leave a comment or ask a question. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.